Thank you very much indeed uh, to all of you for joining this uh, very, very uh, solemn occasion. For us, it's a very uh, important occasion because we have the privilege, the Asian College of Journalism, of being able to host uh, the UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador Madanjit Singh Memorial Lecture of 2021 to be delivered by our very honored guest, Professor Rashida Mohammad Bibi of Maldives. Uh, we know that we are living through very surreal times, to say the least, where this COVID pandemic is uh, surging and uh, wrecking havoc all around us. And yet I think it has lessons for precisely the kind of occasion we are gathered here to solemnize. That uh, no one is safe if all of us are not safe. It's a lesson in the importance of uh, uh, the indivisibility of our uh, well-being, of our welfare. Uh, it's a lesson against what we see as narrow chauvinisms, uh, particularly now when we talk about vaccine nationalism and so on. And it is certainly, I think, uh, important and very, very, I think, uh, uh, significant that we are here to commemorate a person who uh, did more than most we can think of in this region to fight precisely the kind of uh, vociferous divisive tendencies that we see uh, alarmingly rising in our midst. I'm referring, of course, to the founder of the South Asia Foundation, uh, UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, Madhinjit Singh. Born, my pleasant duty here is to introduce, there is a formal introduction which is appended to the invitation and I suppose all of you, most of you must have seen it, but my formal uh, job is to introduce Dr. Madhinjit Singh and the speaker of the day, uh, Dr. Rashid Davidi, before that, let me say a very warm welcome on behalf of ACJ to all those who have joined us today, which includes the staff fraternity, uh, the in, in various parts of South Asia and perhaps from outside. Madame France Makke is joining us from, from France, I believe. Uh, there may be others joining us from other parts of the world. So very warm welcome to this occasion to commemorate the um, uh, uh, Ambassador Madhinjit Singh and to listen to his commemorative lecture. Born today, in fact, in 1924, April the 16th, Ambassador Madhanjit Singh uh, was born in Lahore. His early college years were spent in Lahore. Uh, when he was just 18, he took part in the Quit India you know, movement. This was, of course, pre-partition uh, subcontinent in India. And uh, much later in 1972, he was to receive the Tamra Patra, uh, for his role, significant role in the Quit India movement, who, during which he was imprisoned as well. After his collegiate to, uh, studies in Lahore, he went, on, he went on to study further in Europe. In 1953, he joined the Indian Foreign Service. Uh, he was with the service of uh, until in 1982, he joined UNESCO as director in the cultural sector there. He's authored many books on art and culture. He's himself a very keen photographer and painter uh, of, of international repute, I might add. In the 1953 Venice Biennale featured uh, a lot of his photographic work. He's written on uh, Buddhist paintings in the Janta Caves, oral and intangible heritage of South Asia. To just give you a sample of the kind of uh, breadth and width, width of his interests. Communal harmony and peace have been his abiding interests, and uh, he symbolizes uh, the, the, the pursuit of, of, of this understanding, particularly among the South countries. The UNESCO Madanjit Singh Prize for Promotion of Tolerance and Nonviolence, created by the 52 member UNESCO Executive Board in 1995, marked the 125th anniversary of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. And the, in 2000, he designated, he was, Ambassador Madhinjit Singh was formally designated the UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador. The same year he founded the South Asia Foundation to promote regional cooperation 
among the eight SAT countries, uh, all of which I believe are represented in one form or other today at this conclave. The SAT countries, of course, as we know, are Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, India, Maldives, and Sri Lanka. So that is a measure of the multifaceted uh, man of many parts that uh, Dr. Madhujit Singh was. It's equally my pleasure to formally present to you our distinguished speaker of the evening, who is delivering the commemorative lecture, Dr. Rashida Muhammad Didi. When we asked her how she'd like to be introduced, she said simply as a, a lecturer and researcher, independent researcher and lecturer, uh, which disguises a lot. Uh, she's a member of the Higher Education Council of Maldives. Uh, she got a doctorate from Temple University in Philadelphia, and she's had uh, stints with the UN peacekeeping mission in Liberia. Uh, she's worked with the, at the Commonwealth Joint Office for permanent uh, uh, missions to the UN in New York at the research center of that office. And she's also been a teacher at a school, a principal of a school and a teacher of history at the school. Again, a very checkered career. And it's indeed a privilege that uh, she is to deliver the UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador Madhinjit Singh Memorial Lecture this evening. I would like to particularly also welcome uh, our uh, other eminent guest today, uh, Mr. Manishankar Ayer, uh, 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 Madame France Maquet, who is the uh, trustee, principal trustee of the Madhinjit Singh Foundation, uh, Mr. Naveen Chawla, who I believe has joined us also, uh, who's also with the South Asian Foundation, and others whom I cannot see instantly before me, but a very, very warm welcome. I now would like to request, before we get to the lecture itself, the uh, principal trustee of the Madan Singh Foundation, Madame France Maquet, to say a few words. Um. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the Asian College of Journalism for inviting me to participate to the UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador Madanjit Singh Memorial Lecture. A special thanks to <laughs> Sashi Kumar, who already did the job for me. <laughs> I am most grateful to Professor Rashida Mohammed Didi and all the participants for accepting the invitation. But this lecture could not have been held without the dedication of my fellow trustees of the Madanjit Singh Foundation. And I can see here Dr. Um, Kamal Hussein, the chairpersons of South Asia Foundation and their teams in the different SAR countries, and I see the Bhutanese also, who constantly worked on a voluntary basis to continue to fulfill Maranji's dream, youth education to make the region a better place to live in. Art and science were his guiding domains and principles during his lifetime. While he was a student in the Instituto Italiano per il Medio Estremo Oriente, Ismeo in Rome, Ambassador Sen took him along to the UNESCO Fifth General Conference that was held in Florence, 17 June, 1950. That was the starting point for Madanjit Life's commitment to UNESCO human values. And I quote, construct the defenses of peace in the minds of women and men. That enticed him into setting up the UNESCO Madanjit Singh Prize for the promotion of tolerance and nonviolence in 1996. During his career in the Indian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he never gave up his passion for painting. Some of his works are exhibited at the Modern Art Museum in Stockholm, Sweden. And writing, more than 2,000 books are edited by UNESCO. 
After retirement from the Foreign Office as ambassador in 1983, he became director of the UNESCO cultural sector. The director general Koichiro Matsuda nominated him as UNESCO goodwill ambassador in 2006. But his second life started in 2000 when he set up South Asia Foundation thanks to the guidance of eminent people. South Asian institutions of excellence in the SAR countries were established. He thus gave the opportunity to underprivileged students to continue higher studies through the South Madanjit Singh Scholarship Group while applying gender parity. Finally, by bequeathing his fortune to the Madanjit Singh Foundation, he wished to pursue his commitment to society. Once a former minister and South Asian Foundation India chairperson, Mr. Manishankaraya, who is present today, told me, Madanjit is an ex artist égaré dans la diplomacy, meaning, Madanjit is an artist stayed, uh, strayed away into diplomacy. Today, a global crisis is hitting us. It is not only a health problem, but it has educational, economic, and environment repercussions. With more than 800 youngsters who have gone through our institutes, most of whom who have gone back to their countries to enrich their society. We really have to rethink the way of looking at life environment and education. With the help of all of us, we can make some great changes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Franz Marquet, for your very useful words. May I now request the chairperson of the South Asia Foundation India chapter and our well-wisher, Mr. Manishankar Iyer, who played a big role in behind the scenes in arranging this meeting, by the way, to say a few words uh, before we turn on over to the formal lecture itself. Mr. Manishankar. Thank you very much for the opportunity afforded me. I'm deeply grateful to Madam Rashida Didi for having fulfilled an ambition that I've had for the last couple of years to bring, to welcome back uh, the Maldives, which had drifted away from us into the SAF family, uh, particularly by kindly agreeing to deliver the Madanji Memorial Lecture this afternoon. Um, we have had Madanji Memorial Lectures from uh, eminent personalities in India, in Afghanistan, uh, that was uh, the Minister of Culture there. Then from Professor Rahman Soban, whose brother Farooq is today the chairman of the SAF in Bangladesh. And then we've had a lecture from a young man who was a Madanjit scholar from Bhutan. We've uh, had representation now from the Maldives. So the next turn comes to Pakistan. And uh, I'm hoping against hope that we will be able to get an eminent lecturer from there for next year's event. Uh, we have to cover Nepal as yet and Sri Lanka. We'll certainly do so. And uh, the whole idea of this memorial lecture is to give all of us an opportunity to get together and remember Madanjit by recalling elements of his philosophy and his general approach to South Asia cooperation. That was a truly enlightened approach because most Indians have too many prejudices against too many of their neighbors. And Madanjit was completely free 
of any such privilege, any such prejudice, and inspired largely by Jawaharlal Nehru and his vision of the Asian century in the 21st century, he undertook various journeys and various other initiatives to promote in a practical fashion South Asia cooperation. And I suspect that ours is perhaps the only organization in the country dedicated to promoting cooperation among all South Asians in the region that uh, Madanji called Sasya, South Asia, uh, that uh, through the medium of the education of young people. Unfortunately, politics has intervened and uh, we've hardly had any representation from Pakistan in the near past, but all the other countries, uh, especially now that the Maldives has re-entered uh, our orbit, are very deeply involved in uh, running this program, which involves centers of excellence in each of the eight South Asian countries, including Pakistan, and to where students from the other South Asian countries are given scholarships to study. This is a unique initiative and one that I'm deeply honored to be associated with. Um, I would like to, at this stage, thank Pondicherry University for having uh, hosted the previous sessions of this uh, Madanjit anniversary. And also to thank the Asian College of Journalism for having agreed to take over this responsibility. We found that in uh, Pondicherry, apart from the student body and the faculty, we were not able to attract larger crowds to attend the Madanjit uh, lecture. And just after the ACJ agreed to do so, so as to provide a much wider forum, we suddenly had this COVID crisis. But one of the spin-offs of the crisis is this technology of Zoom that enables us to reach well beyond the limits of even the largest audience hall. And so today we have represented every country of uh, the South Asia Foundation, uh, which is supervised by the Madanji Singh Foundation in Europe. And we have a large number of students from Pondicherry, from the ACJ, both Madanji scholars and others who are listening in to this lecture, which will undoubtedly be the largest heard lecture in our series. So thank you, Zoom. Thank you, ACJ. Thank you, uh, Gurmeet, for having hosted the previous lectures. And my thanks to all my colleagues in the South Asia Foundation branches all over the country for having cooperated with us in this endeavor. And I hope we'll have lots of suggestions from Salima, our representative in Pakistan, as to who could deliver the lecture next year. Uh, we can now cross boundaries without visas and thanks to Zoom, and therefore we should be able to reach a large audience for our lecture next year. Uh, I, I request the other two countries, Nepal and Sri Lanka, to await their turn. We are looking impatiently towards the next three years. Thank you very much, and thank you particularly, Rashida Di, for having accepted to deliver this keynote address. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manishankar. I'd just like to uh, note that we have uh, been joined by uh, Basir Ahmad Haidari, by Ustab Fial, uh, by Mr. Faisal Ahmad, by Bachu Sheikh, Professor Perumal Ilumalai, uh, and uh, 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 Dr. Kamal Hussain uh, on the chat box. They've just uh, 
said uh, hello to everyone. I'm just conveying that to those of you who are not looking at the chat. Uh, it's now my distinct pleasure to invite our uh, main speaker of the evening, uh, Dr. Rashida Muhammad Didi, to deliver the UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador Madanjit Singh Memorial Lecture for 2021. The theme of her talk is Cultural Connectivity Among SARC Countries. Dr. Rashida Didi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is my sound um, all right? Yes. Can everyone fine. hear? Yes. yes. Thank right. you. Um, Mr. Shashi Kumar, uh, Ms. Ms. Marke, and Mr. Shankar, officials of South Asia Foundation, um, members of Asian College of Journalism, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to have been chosen to give a lecture on this important occasion of Ambassador Madanjit Singh's anniversary. Today, we, we recognize Dr. Singh's commitment to regional cooperation. Indeed, his commitment to South Asian unity and goodwill among the region's people is par, par excellence. Now, how did the idea of connectivity uh, come into being and get um, uh, the SARC countries be involved? Is it important for SARC countries or do we know what this is about? But let me just um, tell you how it came into being, the concept of connectivity. It was the declaration at the 14th, 14th, 14th SARC summit in New Delhi that recognized the importance of connectivity. One of the categories recognized for connectivity was culture. So it was believed that connectivity is a vital uh, imperative, is a vital imperative for South Asia's future. So because of Sark's commitment and Dr. Singh's vision for regional unity, I chose this topic. My lecture is dedicated to a topic very much in line, uh, as I just mentioned, with Dr. Singh's vision for the region, which strongly emphasizes unity and cohesion, which can be achieved, I believe, through connectivity. Connectivity has many aspects or substances. From this wide array of substances, I chose, I have selected two aspects, that is performing arts of music and dance. I think Dr. Singh would have approved of this uh, angle of connectivity. Uh, the main purpose for choosing this topic is to awaken the desire of the public to get connected. Unless there is a desire amongst the people, there is no connectivity. There's no uh, need for connection. There's no benefit in connectivity. So that's the reason why I chose the topic. Now, to do this, we need to do certain things. We need activities which are meaningful, participatory, and enjoyable. I will elaborate a little bit more as we go along. Now, in this, in this lecture, I'm not going to describe or narrate cultural connectivity among South Asian countries uh, per se, but rather I'm going to present you with an idea for the institutions, NGOs, think tanks, and organizations such as uh, the South Asia, uh, Asia Foundation, South Asia Foundation to take the initiative and implement the idea if it is considered worthwhile. So I'm letting the idea float. Perhaps you could call it giving food for thought. I'm thinking of connectivity at the public level. Of course, governments of SARC countries um, organize events, um, but these are official events conducted, um, conducted with great formality and pomposity. 
presidents or prime ministers will inaugurate uh, the event. This minister or that minister will attend. But where is the public? The average citizen sees these events on the TV or reads about it in some newspaper or online. So my proposal is saying, let's develop connectivity amongst the average citizen of SARC countries through music and dance. The result from the interaction would be something that the average citizen can, can enjoy and benefit. No doubt we are connected to some extent through Bollywood, which has a great influence on every Sark country. But let's go to a level beyond Arijit Singh's songs uh, and <laughs> Katrina Kaif's moves, you know, popular moves, which everyone loves. Uh, so by this, I mean, let us have more interaction on an aesthetic and educational level, because when you really think of it, we do not have much knowledge of the rich cultures of these two fields in uh, fellow South Asian countries, which I think is a great pity. For example, let us get to know about Nepal's highly diverse music consisting of genres like Tama, Selo, Bajang, and various ethnic music such as Newar music, Sharpa music, Magar, and many more. Now let's go to um, Sri Lanka. Let's get to know Sri Lanka's music which has its roots in four primary areas, that is ancient folk rituals, Buddhist religious tradition, European colonization, and Indian. Sri Lanka's special classical dance called the Kandyan dance is a unique form of dance. It is named after the city of Kandy which is situated in the hills, um, what in Sri Lanka they called up country. Now, this was the site of former historical kingdoms, ancient kingdoms. So it's a very famous city and the particular dance is named after the city and from the upper hill area, upper, uh, so called up country of the country. Then there are, of course, other varieties, uh, such as the dance and rhythm of music called baila, which has its roots in Portuguese colonization. The beat is very different from the Kandyan dance music or the usual so-called low country, that means the plains, um, the usual Sinhalese or Tamil music. These are the two leading uh, ethnic groups of Sri Lanka. There's Afghanistan, the newest member of SARC. Now, Afghanistan's music has a different aspect. As the country is on the crossroads of Asia, along the, the ancient famous Silk Roads, and of course, which again now becoming, uh, might become the Silk Roads roots uh, soon. With, it has, um, uh, the music in Afghanistan has its um, influence from Iran. Central Asian countries like Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, uh, Tajikis, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, and also from East Asia, uh, such as China. Then there's the Pushtun music and others as well. How many of us have seen Afghanistani Atan dance and Katarani popular dance? I certainly have not. Now let's look at Bhutan. <laughs> Traditional Bhutanese music, which includes a spectrum of subgenres from folk to religious songs and music, 
In addition, there is the modern popular dance, uh, po modern popular music called rigsa. Musical instruments include string instruments like the Bhutanese guitar, which is different from the ordinary guitar. And there's also the flute. Bhutanese dance such as Brahmin dance is very different from the more rigorous Kandyan dance of Sri Lanka or Kathakali of India and the Bordoberu music of the Maldives. These are sort of um, louder, harder, um, you know, more rigorous type of um, music and dance, or whereas the Bhutanese is a more gentle, uh, swaying kind of dance. Now let's look at Indian music. Indian music, of course, made no introduction, but I would still sort of mention it <laughs> because everyone is familiar with it to some extent anyway, to a great extent. Um, so there's a long neck tampura, singers of khayal, raga, delicate accompaniments of tabla are uh, involved amongst many, many other instruments and types of song. There's the Sufi music of Kabbali and the very different South Indian music, just to name a few. Now, South Indian uh, classical dance is very famous. Uh, everyone has seen, I'm sure, everyone in South Asia, perhaps almost everyone. Now, we like to see the Indian singers ex it's meaning uh, those of us in South countries, we like to see the Indian singers expressive hand gestures to augment the phrasing of the songs. We like to see all that. We like to hear the music. We like to see the dance uh, and so on. I cannot emphasize this strongly enough. Um, now here I will quote a beautiful raga uh, or khayal by Ustad Rashid Khan. It goes like this. Now I cannot sing, so I can't sing it to the tune. Um, I will just <laughs> read the word, words. My beloved's glance is full of magic. Oh, this love has confused my heart. Who can know the trouble it's caused? I can't get a moment's peace. Now, those of you who are familiar with um, Indian music will say, oh God, why, why, that's not such a big deal. But for me, it is a big deal because I am unfamiliar with uh, Indian uh, special music or any other special music of South Asia as such. And I would like to learn. So please bear with me. <laughs> now let's look at Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, the music spans a wide variety of styles. Apart from the classical music, there is the folk music, such as Baul, rock, and others. Folk music has come to occupy more than um, any other genre in Bangladesh. Uh, these are, there are several sub-genres of folk music as well. Bang is the most commonly known category of folk music. It is mostly performed by hermits who are followers of Sufism. Bangladesh also has the traditional bottle dance, which is not common to other South Asian countries. Perhaps only to perhaps it's practiced only in West Bengal in uh, in India. Now let's look at Pakistan. Now please bear with me. This is not everything. Of course, I'm just skimming skimming through the varieties, the diversity of music and dance in South Asian countries. So this is just a, just the top of the iceberg, as it were. So in Pakistan. Old cultural music with flute called al Ghoza is very famous. It, it has like a double flute. Um, other instruments include the tabla, rubab, and bansari, and more, and many more. Now, some commonalities with North Indian music 
of course, would exist, that is between Pakistan and North India. Um, traditional wedding dances are popular in uh, Pakistan. The regional influence is, of course, great, uh, great. The regional diversity in Pakistan will be great, just as in India. For example, music and dance in Sindh would be very diff different from the Northwestern frontier. And then, of course, in between, there's Punjab, which will share similar music and dancing with the Punjab area of India. Now, coming to the Maldives, I don't know if any of you have heard any music or anything, or you probably think there's, there's not even, there's no music in the Maldives because you never heard of any, <laughs> but there is, believe me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Maldivian dance and music are influenced by East Africa, North African Arab countries, uh, and of course, more recently in history uh, by India. For example, the big drums, what we call Boduberu, meaning big drums, originated from East Africa. Um, it has sort of a uh, Somalian, um, Ethiopian uh, beat to it. And we also have within Boduberu, uh, big drums, we also have a dance called um, Baburu, <laughs> Baburu dance, which means um, African dance. You know, Baburu uh, is the African slave, but uh, Baburu dance, which has uh, trans uh, movements of a trans. And the people look really, they don't look beautiful. Uh, they, the, the Maldivian singing that has the, in, people in a trance, of course, they are beyond control. So they have all kinds of uh, movements and gestures, which are not very pleasant sometimes. But it's very popular in the Maldives. Um, it's part of the culture. <clears throat> yeah, then, um, <clears throat> of course, there are. There is Indian uh, influence, which also existed previously. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> People danced to Indian tunes and um, singing Indian songs. Of course, the pronunciation wouldn't have been correct, but music is beyond borders. So who cares then you can say. Um, uh, there, uh, there was Gujarati influence was very high in the in the Maldives. I remember, because, they, sorry, these songs and dances were performed at the Sultan's uh, palaces and the princesses' um, palaces and so on. Now, I remember when I was a school teacher a long time ago, or maybe most of you weren't even born at that time, <laughs> uh, that long ago, um, we used to be, since there were no cultural teachers as such, the people who are teachers teaching dance and so on. Any teacher will get called to perform or, or prepare students for them. I was one of the few who got called, I enjoyed doing it, but, and became a creative while doing that. So one year, I remember we had a Gujarati, a Gujarati dance. I found the people who had performed this at the Sultan's palaces and brought them, and they sang the Gujarati music, the Gujarati song itself, and uh, performed something called Buzura Nehi Laila, something, something in Gujarati, which was very famous, uh, very popular in the mall, which became very popular. It's still running in some other, uh, with some other singing and so on. So, uh, because people had never seen this dance before, you know, so it was very popular and pleasant. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> in the Maldives, there's also a dance called the water pot dance. In this, the, the, this includes um, girls, younger girls usually, holding metal water pots and they would go around and then longish hair is very popular and is like a must in that. 
and they swing their hair from side to side, from back to front, <laughs> and so on. It's very uh, interesting. Um, <clears throat> so this dance um, has a drum beat, and then the dancers would dance, would tap the metal pots with the metal rings they wear on their fingers. And this is also a very important uh, dance. Now, as you can see, even from this short lecture, <laughs> that there is a wide variety of music and dance in South Asia. Um, so my appeal is let's connect with each other. We do not have to wait for our governments to organize a, some official conference. Let's educate ourselves on the arts, that is on the performing arts, that's particularly music and dance um, from different South Asian countries and enjoy them. Let's learn, to, let's uh, try to enjoy them. And I'm sure we will, at least I will not only get educated at an abstract level, but learn each other's singing styles, songs, and dance. I strongly believe that such cultural activities that give people to people contact make the connection strong. With this idea afloat, I end my lecture, which in the Sark region better connectivity in every aspect of development as Dr. Madanjit Singh would have wished. I wish the Asia Found South Asia Foundation and Asian Center for Journalism all the best in their efforts to promote cohesion in South Asia. Thank you. Do you have any comments or questions? You will be welcome. Yes. If Before we works. come to the comments, let me thank uh, Dr. Rashida Didi for that very fascinating sweep in uh, the Pan region of South Asia. It reminds me of what one of our uh, famous literators and thinkers, A.K. Ramanujam, said, quoting an Irishman. When the Irishman was asked whether trousers is singular or plural, he wasn't <laughs> quite sure. So he said, singular at the top, plural below. So I think <laughs> we, we in the city share the same appetites and look at it almost homogeneously, but South Asia and its variety, fascinating variety. A hint of that was, uh, was there so beautifully expressed by you and the potential of that in making uh, the vision that Ambassador Madanjit Singh fostered uh, would play a very significant role. Uh, while you were speaking, uh, there was a note on the chat box by, uh, uh, by Madame France Maquet where she pointed out that in the 2006 SAF governing council meeting at Paris at the uh, UNESCO headquarters, representatives from all the SAC countries made a musical presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is available on the uh, website. So if you go to the chat, uh, you'll find the website. So you're all invited to, to, to partake of that, that fascinating performance that took place in 2006. And uh, we were also joined while this, I mean, at least I, I saw a greeting from uh, Ms. Veena Sikri, who is, who is also with us. Uh, I welcome her as well to this meeting. Uh, before we proceed, uh, yeah, now with, as, as, um, as uh, Professor Rashida Didi has said, we, have, we probably can spend a few minutes with, on comments uh, or questions if there are any. And I'd request uh, Mr. Manishankar Iyer, who has a comment to make, to, uh, to, to start. Thank you, Sashi. Uh, I entirely endorse the proposal that uh, Rashida Didi has brought before us. Largely because when I worked in the Prime Minister's office in the period 1985-89, I was put in charge of establishing seven zonal cultural centers all over India, which did exactly what she said. No ministers, no speeches, no auditoria even. The organizations were charged with taking troops across their respective zones and introducing people in their villages, in the urban slums, to the cultures that obtained in different parts of the zone. And from time to time, we would have interzonal events 
uh, as also national events, which were called Apna Utsav or our festival. And uh, it's a pity that although the institutions continue to exist, they do so only in name. But on the basis of that experience, I would imagine that uh, Professor Rashida's suggestion is entirely practical, except, except that it costs a lot of money. Now, what France has said will enable us to introduce ourselves to the different music of uh, musics, may I say, of South Asia by looking at what happened in Paris in 2006. But to get a living experience, one really has to uh, experience it in person. And I'm very glad to say that when we had Yumisak at Pondicherry, it was a standard practice there to get the kids from different South Asian countries to put up a common performance, which clearly everybody enjoyed. Uh, and there were countries like Pakistan who were not represented. So then the kids would just undertake to be Pakistan themselves so that it would be an entire South Asian uh, presentation with no country left out. I think that is the spirit we need to engage. Uh, but uh, I'm afraid without state patronage or UNESCO patronage perhaps, or perhaps the patronage of the Madhuri Singh Foundation, we will not be able to give much practical shape to this. Although if we did decide that uh, we would bring on the screen events that are taking place in our respective countries and invite our family to look at them, it may constitute a small beginning. But thank you very much for this very constructive suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manishankar Ayat. Madame France, in her introduction, uh, as an aside, said, quoted Mr. Manishankar as uh, saying about Ambassador Madhujit Singh that he was a, an artist who strayed into diplomacy. Uh, we just saw an example of a diplomat who strayed into art with his own <laughs> cultural centers and, and did it rather well, I must say. I remember those, South, those cultural centers were really a great initiative. Unfortunate, unfortunate that they were not sustained. Uh, any other comments or suggestions? Uh, please go ahead. Whoever is speaking may please raise a hand or unmute your microphone and speak. A question to Professor Rashida Didi or a suggestion or a comment. If I may, yes, please. <clears throat> Mr. Raghu, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I just want to uh, uh, maybe, point Maybe out, quickly uh, introduce yourself to so everyone. Uh, uh, my name is uh, VK Raghunathan. I'm uh, part of the Prince team at the Asian College of Journalism. I just wanted to add uh, that, uh, you know, it, it, but for the last two years, uh, you know, the previous year where uh, the ACJ students have been part of a, a welcome party or a farewell party, students from you know, other South Asian countries have uh, displayed their talent. You know, they have sung songs from their country or, you know, like uh, performed dances from their country or even read out poetry from their country. So that's been, have been a regular piece of ACJ, but uh, because of the pandemic, uh, it has not been uh, happening for the last few years. Uh, last two years, rather. Just one at a time. Thank you. Uh, may I say something? Yes, Professor, please. Uh, um, now, when I said that let's do this um, at the public level, I know that official um, at official conferences and so on, um, there are, okay, sometimes these dances are put on. But I'm thinking of more at the, yes, again, I also acknowledge that it's expensive. But when institutions and uh, so on, they do, the, you do have uh, conferences and so on. So sometimes instead of one political conference or one conference on um, dealing with a political issue, such as is China strong in uh, Indian notion, etc. You know, let's have 
uh, this kind of music and dance connectivity. Um, let's focus on that. That's my suggestion. Not, of course, every now and then the governments do and the institutions do have um, uh, the cultural events and dances every now and then. But is it enough for us to get connected? Uh, this is hypothetical, perhaps, but I, I strongly believe it can be done. Thank you. May I say something here, Shashi? Could yes, I say please. something? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to really say that I... Could I, you just introduce yourself? Just, sorry. Yeah, I've, I, I'm unmuted. I think it's okay now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I just have to say that I really welcomed... Uh, that is Ms. Veena Sikri speaking. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I'm sorry. I must introduce myself. I'm Veena Sikri, um, Vice Chairman of the South Asia Foundation India Chapter. Um, and I really enjoyed and recalling uh, the wonderful contribution of Ambassador Madanjit Singh today in his birth anniversary um, and how uh, South Asian culture has been so close to my heart that way back in 1992 when I was DJ ICCR, I'd actually organized the first ever South Asia cultural festival where all the SARC countries came together in Delhi and many, many other cities across India and uh, in different genres, in theater, in music, in dance, in handicrafts, in, in so many things. And it was a, a grand success, the coming together. So perhaps we should ask ICCR if they could continue this tradition um, at the next SARC um, summit whenever it's held. And then in 2010, when I had inaugurated the um, uh, when we had, uh, and I still remember Ambassador Madanjit Singh's contribution in the South Asia Women's Network, SWAN, which is a group of women among all the SARC countries and includes Myanmar. So we had organized the first um, South Asia Women's Theatre Festival. So this was like one play from each of the SARC uh, countries, uh, which was on a gender-based issue. I mean, the participants, the director, anybody, it could be man or woman, that was no problem. But the issue had to be a gender issue. And I remember even from Maldives, we got a wonderfully young and dynamic uh, theater group, and uh, they were... Um, very beautifully portrayed some of the women's issues in Maldives. It was a grand success. So I think uh, either collectively with all genres or even one genre by another, just do music one year, dance the other year, theater the third year, so that uh, the countries of Sark keep coming together and remember their cultural connectivity, which goes back millennia, you know, and, and really we are from the same culture. Thank you. Thank you. We have another seven or eight minutes if there are more may I, may I add a few things here? Yes, please. Who is speaking? I am Professor Gurmeet, Vice Chancellor yes, of Pondicherry yes, University. Yes, please go ahead. Please now, go when ahead. you are talking about these cultural programs, I just wanted to highlight that in our university, we do it regularly, year after year, we have been doing it. Whenever there is any international conference or any other kind of an event, we do this uh, cultural program of star countries at the end of that, and our students do very well. Just keeping in line with the vision of uh, Ambassador Madanjit Singh, because we all know he thought about cooperation amongst the SARC nations at a time when people were looking only at two blocks, we all know. And uh, hats off to his vision that he thought of this kind of uh, an organization. And uh, keeping in line with that, we still keep doing this so that people know about it. And uh, I hope we'll, we'll be able to continue that in the years to come. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I would like to first of all thank you so much, Professor Rashida, for your. Would, would you please? Talk. Who's speaking? Oh, France, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think now with the new technology, of course, it is very costly. Yes, there's no, no, no problem about it. Uh, and at that time, it was Naranjit with his own money that uh, decided to do that festival. Uh, to bring to UNESCO uh, the SARC culture uh, in, in vivo. Uh, now, with all this new technology, we can uh, maybe, maybe in an easier way, because there's no question of uh, visa and such things. We can try to do something all together, like we are doing today in Zoom, well, ask each uh, chapter to uh, prepare something and get together and, and widen the, the, the circle of uh, interaction uh, through art and culture. Thank you for the idea. Sir, I want to say something. Yes. Dr. Nadia from Lahore. Mm -hmm. Please go ahead. 
Dr. Nadi, may yes. I? Please, yes, please sir. go ahead. Please go. Yeah, I'm um, uh, actually uh, assalamu alaikum and uh, hello. How are you, everyone? Uh, I am Dr. Nadia, and I am the first batch of uh, yes. uh, Madan Jeet Singh Institute in Kashmir Studies. And yes, uh, I today I joined this uh, meeting because of I really want to thank Mr. Manishankar Ayer and Vina Sikri ji and Madam. You are also because I knew only three person in this whole meeting, but I really want to thank to you people because of you people I get my PhD. From occupied Kashmir, wo uh, Sri Nagar, na. So I really, really, really thank you, and I really, I really pray for Madan Jeet Singh Sahab because he is the man who chose the Pakistan people for a PhD, or he gave uh, visas and uh, scholarship. And I really thank you. Uh, if Manishankar Ayer Sahab or Vina Sikri Madam, please uh, say something. Uh, I, uh, presently, I'm working with Punjab University. As a AP, as an assistant professor, and I'm really thank you. I'm really, really thank you to all of you people who uh, work this kind of the um, very good organizations and uh, uh, um, uh, called many people to oblige this kind of the sohuliyat, uh, opportunities. So, Madam, uh, I write uh, in your email, but uh, uh, after a long time, I saw you never reply me. But I, I send you a mail. For my thank you, for uh, I really want to thank you, you or your uh, Madan Ji Singh sah Sahab, to Dr. Nadia. Uh, uh, actually, I'm really thank you, all of you people. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, and I'm very happy to finally after a long time. Also. I, I, I remember Dr. Nadia very well. Yeah, uh, yeah, ma'am, ma'am, ma Sikri, ma'am. Oh yeah. my God, you are yeah. looking so gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> or, or where is the um, uh, Manishankar Ayer Sahab? Please, he's please. Here, oh, he's here, right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you remember, madam, one time you came in occupied, uh, in, sorry, Sri Nagar, and that time I was there, and uh, we have uh, some picture. And uh, uh, I have a good memory with you and Manishankar Ayer Sahib. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember we used to come very often because there was so much interaction with the university and we were making the document and hoping yeah, to yeah. continue it. But uh, now it has not continued. But still, uh, you are yeah. really a success story. And now it's good that you are in Punjab University. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. And I am the first Pakistani. Because of you people, I can get a degree from this side. <laughs> and I'm really thank you. You become my life. You people become my life, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing well. What are you teaching now? Uh, history. Oh, history okay. of Kashmir. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. History. Okay. And in Punjab University, no? Lahore, Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, or today I saw you. I re I'm really happy. Oh, you're looking so, so, <laughs> so young, yeah. <laughs> We have okay. time just for one more comment if there is one when we are nearing five o'clock when we Sir, may I say? Yes, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm Dr. Purushottam. Who is this? Uh, Dr. Purushottam. Yes, go ahead, please. Sir, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Today we conducted a memorial lecture on our ambassador, Lord Ambassador uh, Madanjit Singh. The title is Vision and Mission of uh, uh, Ambassador Madanjit Singh, uh, spoken by Professor Lasar Samraj. Today, around 2.15, we conducted this lecture. Anyway, really, we are very thankful to Staff India, Madam France, Manisha Kraherji. Really, last time, uh, our, our center, you may sir, conducted this uh, program. Anyway, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, you like? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Manishankar, would you like to say something at the very end? Otherwise, we'll get on to the vote of thanks. Yes, please go ahead. Go ahead. You're muted. You're muted. You have to unmute yourself. I just wanted to say that prior to going on an official visit to the Maldives, Rajiv Gandhi made a a very special visit to the Minikoi island of Lakshadweep, which shares mm -hmm. linguistic ties with uh, Maldives in that Divehi 
is spoken in Minikoi. And on finding that this was the case, which he did not know earlier, he collected all the primary school books in Divehi that were available or made available to him. And when we went across to the Maldives at the beginning of the following year, he presented them to the authorities in the Maldives and thereby established that language is perhaps the strongest connectivity in culture that uh, one can imagine. And then when he returned from the Maldives, he returned to Minikoi and he told them about all that he had seen in the Maldives. So there is a very intimate connect even to that country of, the, of South Asia, which is farthest from the Indian mainland. And uh, so I would like to really reinforce all that uh, Rashida Didi has said, and to say that I would be happy to organize from the South Asia Foundation, India, something on the lines of what Madame France Marquet has suggested. And I would request, since most of my colleagues are on this program, for them to think of this in a similar way. Nepal has already asked on this, uh, on this scoreboard, a uh, chat board, to uh, be a major center for this kind of a cultural cooperation or connectivity. And so I think you've touched uh, Rashida ji, you've touched the hearts of all of us, and I think you've given us a new direction in which we could constructively work, thanks largely to Mr. Zoom. Whoever is behind <laughs> the technology of Zoom, I think has helped South Asian connectivity more even than your lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a very useful and interactive uh, session. Uh, I now invite uh, Dhanya Skari on behalf of the Dean of the ACJ to propose a vote of thanks, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Dhanya. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. On behalf of the Asian College of Journalism, I would like to thank our chief guest, Dr. Yashida Mahmoud for taking out the time in the middle of the pandemic to deliver the UNESCO Whitman Ambassador Madhunjit Singh Memorial Lecture on cultural connectivity among South countries. Thank you for your insightful speech today and all your larger efforts to address regional unity and other South Asian issues, especially those related to the Maldives. I'd also like to thank Madame Sans Makhe, Principal Trustee of Madhunjit Singh Foundation, and Mani Shankaraya, Chairperson of the South Asia Foundation's India Chapter, for being here with us today and for their relentless pursuit to promote regional cooperation in South Asia. I'd also like to thank Shashi Kumar, the Chairman of ACJ, NDS, and the UNESCO Madhunjit Singh Center of South Asian Journalism for ensuring that the SAF scholarships are awarded to worthy candidates and continuing to boost regional cooperation through education. Last but certainly not the least, a big word of thanks to all staff members, students, and faculty members for being such a great audience today. Thank you and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much.